So let's talk about introduction to human gene cloning. First, the human human protein expressed via recombinant technique was insulin, and next was uh, next was growth hormones. Clone human insulin DNA sequence into plasmid, and the bacterial cells were then used to synthesize a protein of interest. In 1977, the insulin gene was cloned in into plasmid, expressed in the bacterial cells, and isolated by scientists at Gene Tech First Company biotechnology company co-founded in 76 to produce insulin. In 82, the recombinant form of human insulin, which is called hemiolin, became the first recombinant DNA product to be approved by human application by the US, uh, uh, by FDA. Gross hormone was isolated from the pituitary gland of human cadavers. It was very expensive, very inefficient, and posed a risk of unknowingly copyrifying viruses and other pathogens as contaminants that could be passed of people to people receiving the hormone. The second topic, what makes a good vector? Practical feature of DNA uh, cloning vectors. What's the practical feature of DNA cloning vectors? The size. The size is small enough. It is small enough to, to be easily separated from chromosomal DNA of host plasmid. The origin of replication. Every plasmid have an origin of replication, which is a site for DNA replication that allow plasmid to replicate, replicate independently from the host chromosomes. The copy number. The number of plasmid in the cell, normally it have a high copy number. Multiple cloning site, which is a polylinker. It's a, it's a region in the plasmids that have several restriction enzyme in which you insert the gene into. Selectable, selectable marker genes, which is a, a, a antibiotic selection, allow to select the transformed colonies like MR, TET, R, like Z. Have a RNA polymerase promoter sequences used for transcription in vitro and in vivo. All of these are practical feature of the plasmid used in recombinant technology. Types of ve vectors. You have bacterial plasmid vector and these can clone inserts that are smaller than 7 kb. So if you have a gene that is smaller than 7 kb, you can use bacterial plasmid vectors. Some express eukaryotic proteins f from genes poorly. Bacteriophage vectors, cosmid vectors, bacterio, uh, bacterial artificial chromosome, BAC, yeast artificial chromosome, YAC, and TI vectors are other types of vectors. If you look at this table, please, uh, you need to study the sizes and the types of the uh, vectors this, uh, from this table. So you can see this is a comparison between just said uh, types of vector, uh, vectors, bacteriophage vectors, cosmid, uh, bacterial plasmid vectors, BACs and YACs and TI vectors, and the size of these vectors. Continuing the types of vectors, the bacterial phage vectors, it's a recombinant DNA, recombinant DNA are packaged into viral particle in vitro. These phages, these phages then infect lone of E. coli cells, these enzymes, uh, these uh, viruses. These zones of dead bacteria, we call it blakes, contain millions of recombinant phage particles. So basically we use the uh, virus to generate our recombinant protein. Cosmid vectors. Recombinant cosmid is packaged into viral particles and used to infect E. coli cells. So basically, in these two types, we use the, very, the, the virus, the mechanism of virus of infection, to transfer the DNA into the bacteria. Bacterial colonies are grown on the blade and the reco recombinants are screened by antibiotic selection, the same way we screened before. Bacteria expression, expression vectors allow this is these allow high level protein expression in bacterial cells because they have a prokaryotic promoter next to the multiple cloning sites. Bacterial RNA polymerase can then bind to the promoter and transcribe the insert sequence and then translate it into protein and then you can provide it as a recombinant protein. The problem with the bacteria expression vectors sometimes bacteria ribosomes cannot translate eukaryotic sequences or protein is not and or protein is not folded correctly since bacteria doesn't have the organelle for processing. So this is a major problem between um, um, using a bacteria with a eukaryotic protein. Either can, the ribosome cannot read the messenger RNA or cannot fold the protein properly, uh, eukaryotic protein properly.
The back bacterial artificial chromosome, its large locapi chromosome, a plasmid, can accept large size of DNA insert up to 300 KB. We, uh, were used during the Human Genome Project to clone and sequence large pieces of chromosomes. The yak uh, yeast artificial chromosome, small plasmid grown in E. coli and introduced to yeast cells, SVC, uh, best for cloning very large DNA up to 2 megabase, uh, were used for Human Gene Project. TI vector only exclusively naturally occurring plasmid isolated from the bacteria that is a soil plant pathogen causing disease in plants. When the bacteria infect plant cells, bacteria infect plant cells, the tDNA from the TI plasmid inserts into the host chromosome. tDNA uh, codes for uh, important hormone for the plants is called auxin that weakens the plant cell wall and the infected uh, plants divided and enlarged to form a tumor. It's a kind of a, 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 a promote growth. It's a, kind of, it's a kind of a tumor for the plants. Scientists use TI vector to deliver genes to plants by removing toxic genes for, for auxins. So basically TI is the only vector from these type of vectors that is used to introduce, to introduce DNA into plants, the others into animals. How do you identify the cloned gene of interest? You need uh, uh, as a way uh, as a way to, to to identify gene of interest. You need to create a DNA library. Well, actually, it's a building a collection of cloned genes. These are collection of cloned DNA fragments for, from a particular organism contained within a bacteria or virus as a host. Then they are screened to pick out different genes of interest. There are two types of libraries, genomic DNA libraries and complementary DNA libraries. We normally say it uh, cDNA libraries. Genomic libraries. Genomic libraries, chromosomal DNA from the tissue of interest, say for instance liver, is isolated and digested with restriction enzyme, which produce many fragments that in include the entire genome. Vector is digested with the same enzyme. DNA ligase is used to ligate genomic DNA fragments into vector DNA. These recombinant vector are used to transform bacteria and theoretically each bacteria will contain a recombinant plasmid. The disadvantage of, so basically you will have a collection of bacteria collection of bacteria, each bacteria will have like a collection of the um, pieces of the DNA that have been restricted, uh, that have been digested by with a restriction enzyme inserted into the recombinant plasma. The disadvantage of genomic li libraries, entrons are cloned in addition to exons because you, you digest, you rest, uh, do restriction enzymes for the whole DNA with the exons and entrons. So basically you need the functional genes only. So the one first DS advantage is uh, uh, entrons are cloned in addition to exons. The majority of genomic DNA is entron in, in eukaryotes, so majority of the library will contain non-coding piece of DNA. And of course, you know that two percent, around two percent of the total DNA is exons, is coding. Other disadvantages include many organisms have very large genomes, so searching for the gene of interest is extremely difficult, and of course it's a time consuming. So uh, this is how you do human gene uh, library. So you have the human DNA, you restrict, you do, you do cleavage by restriction enzyme, you have a lot of fragments, you combine this fragment with the same plasmid which is cut, cut by the same restriction enzymes, so basically you will have a library of bacteria, a genomic library contain all restriction fragments of human DNA inserted as a human genome, uh, as a library. Uh, if you look closely, you can see here that uh, um, the other one uh, for the cDNA library, uh, the difference between the, the major difference between cDNA library is that you work on the messenger RNA. So you take from the human any cell type from the human, the total messenger RNA, you extract the total messenger RNA, you do reverse transcription. So you have the, the DNA, uh, tem, uh, you, ha you do reverse transcription, so you will have the DNA sequence. And then uh, doing a PCR, you can see that you have the double strand um, DNA sequence. And then you use this DNA sequence to insert into a plasmid using the same restriction enzyme as well. So here you cut with ECHO-R1, 
and then cut the, uh, the plasmid with echo R1 and you ligate both of them and you introduce into the bacteria. So you can see here that the major difference between both of them that in the second one, the cDNA cloning, uh, cDNA library, you only deal with the genes that have been expressed because you st the start the starting material is messenger RNA while in the first one the human genome DNA library uses the whole DNA so some, a lot of entrants will be introduced inside the bacteria while the in the other cDNA library there is no entrant all of them are messenger RNA that have been reverse transcribed so the cDNA library uses the messenger RNA from tissue of interest is isolated. Uh, this double-stranded cDNA is made by reverse transcription. This uh, messenger RNA is then degraded either by enzyme or alkaline solution. The DNA polymerase is used to synthesize a second strand of DNA to create double strand. Uh, there is a short linker you add at the end of the, uh, the new double-stranded format, which have the restriction site to be easily uh, 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 digested by the restriction enzyme. This linker cDNA are cut with the restriction enzyme, cut the vector with the same restriction enzyme, ligate the fragment to the vector, and then you transform to have a recombinant bacteria. The advantage, it is a col actually a collection of actively expressing genes in cell tissue from which the messenger RNA was isolated. Of course, entrants are not cloned, can be created and screened to isolate genes that are primarily expressed only under certain conditions in a tissue. So if you need to know if you, you are testing a drug on the liver and you need to know which genes are active upon introduction of this drug, so once you treat the drug, you collect the messenger RNAs that is formed after the drug treatment and you try to see what genes are uh, have been uh, transcribed uh, because you take the messenger RNA, okay? Test time, so assume that a gene involved in increased the muscle mass gene is involved in increased muscle mass is expressed when the muscle cells are exposed to growth hormone what would be the source of the cDNA library muscle cell or muscle exposed to growth hormone explain your answer okay think about these questions disadvantage can be difficult to make the cDNA library if the source of tissue with an abundant amount of messenger RNA for the genetic is the muscle mass Gene is involved in increased muscle mass. Is expressed when the muscle cells are exposed to growth hormone. What would be the source of the cDNA library? Muscle cell or muscle exposed to growth hormone? Explain your answer. Okay. Think about these questions. Disadvantage can be difficult to make the cDNA library if the source of tissue with an abundant amount of messenger RNA for the genetic for the gene is not available. So you need after that you do library screening to identify the gene interest because in, in both cases you have DNA sequences that have been introduced into bacteria and you have a lot of bacteria that have a lot of sequences either come from the uh, human DNA or come from the messenger RNA either genomic or cDNA library. So you need to um, pinpoint the gene of interest. So bacterial colonies containing recombinant DNA are grown on an agar plate. Used ni nylon on nitrous cellulose filter is placed over the plate and some of the bacteria colonies stick to the filter at the exact location they were in the plate. Treat filter with alkaline solution to lyse the cell and of course to denature the DNA. Denature DNA bind to the filter as a single stranded DNA. The filter is incubated with a probe. The probe is actually is a small sequence of DNA that is radioactive radioactive labeled or have a fluorescent dye. The probe is a DNA fragment that is complementary to the gene of interest you, you, uh, you are testing. The probe binding binds to complementary and this process uh, to the complementary sequence. So probe is a small sequence of DNA that is labeled either by radioactive nucleotide or fluorescent dye. And when it binds to the uh, uh, its specific uh, complementary sequence of DNA uh, this causes hybridization. So filter, this all is happening um, above the filter. The filter is washed to remove excess unbound probe. Filter is exposed to film autoradiography if you're using radioactive nucleotides. Anywhere, the probe has to bound to the filter. So if the probe bound to the to the filter, that's mean the probe have found its complementary sequence. And of course, you know the sequence of the probe because you already designed it. So once it bound, 
you can uh, have the signal on the film. This radioactivity or fluorescent intensity depends on the abundance of the gene of interest. So if you have a lot of gene, the gene is expressed a lot of amount, so you, leave, you have a high signal. The film is developed, developed to create a permanent record of the colony. Use, you can use a digital instrument to detect a probe binding. The film is then compared with the orig original agar blade to identify which colony contain recombinant plasmid with the gene of interest. So let's see again the process diagrammatic. So we have the bacteria grown on plate. Of course, these bacteria have all, let's say for instance, the, it, it is a cDNA library. So each bacteria have a different insert inside it, come from the messenger RNA of genes of, that had been expressed. So in this bacteria that is cloned, you place a nylon mem membrane, a nylon membrane over the uh, colony. Uh, then you take a nylon membrane or a filter over this colony. Then you treat the nylon with a detergent or NOH to lyse the bacteria and denature DNA. So you, so you now have on the filter paper a denatured DNA. Denatured DNA, that means single strand. You, you, you need to fix the DNA to the nylon and then add the, the probe. The probe is a, is a sequence that you know already and need, you need this sequence to search if the gene of interest is present or not. The probe, you can see on the uh, inset um, that has been en enlarged, the probe is a, a small sequence of DNA that will bind to its complementary uh, sequence on the DNA on the filter. So after that, you leave to develop, you will see two spots here, for example, on the developed film. This means that the gene is existing in two locations or two bacteria. So once you know the two locations, you align this filter paper again on the blade and you can see which, which bacteria contain this uh, gene of insert. And you took these uh, two bacteria and inoculate into uh, LB broth or media to grow. So that's mean you isolated the gene of interest or the bacteria containing your gene of interest. That's colony hybridization. Library screening to identify continuum. Library screening rarely results in the cloning of the full length genes. Okay, so you, you really you only get a fragments of the genes. Usually you got small pieces of the gene. The pieces are sequenced and the scientists look for overlapping sequence, look for the start and the stop codon to know when the full length of the gene is obtained. Uh, PCR. Uh, this is uh, PCR. Uh, is a, it's a very good technique used in recombinant technology developed in the mid 80s by Kari Mulls. Technique for making copying or amplifying a specific sequence of DNA in a short period of time. The PCR process, um, basically it's a, a target DNA to be un identified in the tube, mixed with nucleotides, the four types of nucleotides, buffer with, with DNA polymerase, uh, this uh, addition, with additional forward and reverse primers are added, showing they are short single-stranded um, DNA, uh, 20 to 30 base pair. The primers are complementary uh, to nucleotide flanking opposite edges of DNA. The reaction tube is placed in a thermocycler uh, for a BCR cycle. Each cycle, uh, each BCR cycle must consist of three uh, phases. The denaturation at around 96 degree, the annealing, this means the temperature uh, when the um, uh, primer primers hydrogen bonds with the complementary uh, bases at the opposite ends at degree at a, a degree around 55 to 65 then you have an extension from 70 to 75 degrees centigrade uh, by the end of the cycle that's mean in that phase the dna polymerase copies target dna at the end of one cycle you can repeat it up to 30 or even 40 the amount of dna has been doubled if uh, you we can see it again here from the figure you have a double-stranded DNA, you start the denaturation, the first phase, the DNA is formed, uh, which are around, uh, is, uh, formed, uh, is divided into, is digested into single-stranded DNA. The primer, the forward and reverse primer binds with complementary sequence. In the extension stage, uh, the polymerase start uh, uh, forming uh, double-stranded DNA. All this is uh, cycle one. You can repeat this cycle to have like a million copy of DNA. Uh, you can see here that uh, BCR cloning can take advantage of an interesting quirk of thermostable, thermostable polymerase. So you can see here the target DNA, and this is the region you need to be cloned. <coughs> you denature DNA, and then uh, uh, primers are annealed. 
so amplify DNA with a tag DNA polymerase. This tag DNA polymerase usually adds a nucleotide to the end of the PCR product. So it adds a nucleotide to the end of the PCR product. So you can use this advantage when cloning to a T vector. T vector. The T vector usually have a single stranded thymine nucleotide at each end. So the existence of a thymine in the T vector, vector, uh, T vector DNA and the existence of additional adenine in the insert you have, uh, you have amplified will ligate easily and make like a, a small sticky ends without the need of any restriction enzyme to, uh, to uh, make the recombinant plasmid. And then you took this recombinant plasmid and transformed to the bacteria. As DNA is copied, this tag and the other polymerase used for PCR normally add a single adenine nucleotide to the three end of the PCR product. After amplifying a target gene, cloned PCR product can be ligated into plasmid called T vector. Okay, the T vector, the advantage of T vector that it contains single stranded thymine nucleotide at each end that can complementary base pair with the overhanging adenine nucleotide in PCR product. Advantage of PCR. Of course, you know that the most advantage it can amplify millions of copies of target DNA from small, small starting material uh, in a short time of, uh, period of time, 2n. So n is the number of PCR cycles. So if you if you done like 10 cycles, you will have like 2 to the power 10. Okay, number uh, of molecule of DNA as a product. The type of DNA polymerase used is very important. So the tag DNA polymerase isolated from species of um, uh, bacteria called uh, Thermus aquaticus, and this uh, uh, they discovered these bacteria in hot springs. And these bacteria have the tag DNA polymerase that is now it's normally used in BCR. The application. You can make making DNA probes, studying gene expression, detecting viral and bacterial infections, diagnostic of genetic condition, detection of DNA from fossilized dinosaur tissues, detection of trace amount of DNA from tissue found at crime scenes, cloning BCR product is rapid and effective compared to other DNA libraries. The disadvantage need to know something about DNA sequence that flanks the gene of interest to design primers. And notes, design primer includes restriction site sequence. You need the primer to have a restriction enzyme to, e to be easily being digested after doing the BCR to be easily being introduced into a vector. The product and the vector must digest by this enzyme, then they ligate. If you look here, uh, this is an important slide showing the different application of PCR. Of course, it's application of rare DNA sequences for human genetic testing and disease diagnostic, for DNA cloning, for studying gene expression, for forensic DNA analysis, for paternity testing and family relationship, for human remains identification, even uh, corpse cadavers, for diagnostic tests, uh, uh, for diagnostic tests for diseases came from viruses or pathogen.